Honestly, these men just needed to go to therapy instead of kidnapping a young girl, or they could have just gone to jail because they did a lot of things that deserved jail time. Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you another episode of my reading romance vlog series. If you're not familiar with this on my channel, I basically go ahead and read subgenres of romance that I've not really been acquainted with. And I typically have a very bad time and I'm scarred for life. I previously have done monster romance, dark romance, and taboo romance. And this week we're gonna be doing mafia romance. So the first book that we're going to be picking up in this video is Brutal Prince by Sophie Ulla. Arc. This book is about a guy and a girl from two warring mafia families and they are forced into an arranged marriage. And then the second book we'll be picking up is Den of Vipers by K.A. Knight. This is a book that is very interesting. It was hyped up very much so by TikTok and so I've always thought about reading it ever since I heard about it because it has some very wild sex scenes in it and it's about this woman named Roxy who is kidnapped by the Vipers who are a mafia group and it is a reverse harem where she sleeps with all these men and hijinks ensue. And then lastly in this video we're going to be reading Mafia Mistress which is a book that is about an age gap romance between an 18 year old and a man in his 40s. She is also kidnapped and she falls in love with this guy that's way older than her. So Brutal Prince is a marriage of convenience mafia story. It's about our main character Ada and a guy named Cal. Ada is Italian and Callum is Irish and so their families do not get along. They have a lot of bad blood and at the start of the book Ada sneaks into a party at Callum's mansion and unfortunately like sets their living room on fire and runs away and so Callum hunts her down and a bunch of like stuff ensues where like her brother's kneecap ends up getting broken and he's like a famous like college basketball player and it like ends his season and so all this stuff happens and so the dads of both the families decide that Callum and Ada need to get married to bring everyone together and so it's kind of like a modern day forced arranged marriage situation and that part was fine. I also did enjoy some of the sex scenes in this. Like I felt like it wasn't like offensive in any way, but this book was honestly so boring. You hear mafia and you're like, oh my God, this book's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be dark. There's gonna be murder. And then that's just really not what this was. Also, there was a weird random age gap. Ada is only 18 and then Callum is in his like early thirties. And I don't even know why this age gap was here. It made no sense. This is one of the times where I'm like, why are romance authors so obsessed with making the main characters so young. The biggest sin a book can commit for me is be boring. And I found this to be quite boring. I'm glad that it wasn't that long. So I did like blow through it, but there's just not a lot that goes on in this. It's a lot of like them like having sex and then like some like light mafia stuff. It kind of feels like a very vanilla version of the mafia. Like we don't really get a ton. Like there's like this random background story going on where like the Polish mafia wants Callum to like give him something because like Callum is like running for this I don't even really remember like what the position is but it's like something in the city like he's going to like be someone with power and so the Polish guy wants him to give him something and so the entire book like the Polish guy is like trying to get back at them and then Ada has this like ex-boyfriend that's obsessed with her and so at the end of the book he actually like kidnaps her which is like so random and so overall this book was just kind of boring like I don't know the beginning I guess was kind of exciting because they do try to kill each other he is allergic to strawberries so on their wedding day Ada eats some strawberries and then when they kiss he ends up having to go to the hospital and then there's a scene after that where Callum tries to drown her in the pool so it's definitely like serious enemies to lovers since they try to you know off each other and then a lot of the sex is like hate sex in the beginning so that part was decent I definitely enjoyed the shower scene at the very beginning the actual romance between them didn't make a ton of sense to me and then their age gap again I don't really get it I don't really know what a guy who's like 30 is gonna have in common with an 18 year old and by the end of it they are suddenly like obsessed with each other but I I don't understand I don't really understand the journey that took us there I also thought the writing in this was kind of bad I didn't love the inner monologue of either of these characters I don't know it was just kind of like blah like I can't even sit here and make fun of it as much as I normally do in these videos because it was so boring like it genuinely was boring and I didn't like Ada she was very immature which makes sense because she was 18 and she was just kind of childish and so she was meant to be like this like tomboy like really like strong main female character but I kind of felt like she just 
kind of again aired on the side of being childish and so i didn't enjoy anything about it and i feel like the little action that was in this book was just so randomly slotted in that it was just like whatever like there's a part where callum gets kidnapped by the polish mafia and then ada goes and saves him and then the end she gets kidnapped by the boyfriend and then he has to go save her and i was just kind of like oh i don't know like it was boring like you would think like kidnapping that'd be exciting but this book was not exciting and it was just kind of silly and stupid like there's actually this one scene where callum gets drugged like somebody roofies his drink and i'm like you're telling me that you're supposed to be like the super smart mafia guy and you're just gonna drink like a random ass drink like a, like a lady at like a club gave you like i don't know like i don't know and i'm so sorry if you like this i know that this is a very very popular mafia book but it just was not for me <laughs> Okay, besties, we have to talk about Den of Vipers. This was a book. I wouldn't say it was a good book, but it was comprised of writing and pages, and it was just generally bad. It is truly one of the horniest books I've ever read in my life. And for what? This book is 652 pages, and there is no reason on God's green earth that it should be so. I wanted to DNF so badly, but I had to use my iron will so that I could finish this for you guys and tell you what I think. So let me just go ahead and set the scene for you, let you know what this book is about. We open on the Vipers. This is a band of four men that make up the mafia group called the Vipers, hence why it's called Den of Vipers. And they are in the middle of torturing this guy. I don't Really remember what he did but basically they're torturing him they're beating him up he owes them something and so to pay off his debts he tells them that they can have his grown daughter who's like in her mid to late 20s i don't exactly know how old she is but basically he's like hey my daughter roxy she owns a bar on the other side of town if you leave me alone you can go and kidnap her and have her they see a picture of her and they are already hard in their jeans like they are like she's sexy let's go kidnap her so they show up at her bar and she fights back a bit but it only takes about 60 pages before she's suddenly thinking about how hot all these men are and how she is dreaming about them and having sex dreams and masturbating and so she folds pretty quickly in this and you'd think if you were this strong badass woman that was kidnapped and you own your own bar you probably would try a little harder to escape she does try to escape like once or twice but she doesn't get anywhere with that and then she just kind of accepts her situation and she's just like I guess I'll stay with these hot and sexy men throughout this whole book I just kept thinking about how this plot only works if everyone is sexy because if your kidnappers are hot and then you're hot you get to live they're not gonna murder you and then you're kind of okay with whatever happens to you because they're hot and sexy there's just a lot of like model looking people going on in this story the four vipers are Ryder who is the leader his brother Kenzo who is like the gambling money guy and then we have a guy named Garrett who used to be a fighter and now he's sort of their enforcer and then lastly we have diesel and he's supposed to be the crazy ones the amount of times that our author referred to him as being so crazy was endless i wish that i had an ebook copy so i could search up for you how many times she was like "Ooh, diesel's crazy he has his brand of crazy the term brand of crazy was used if not 100 times at least 200. every character in this book gets a point of view at some point obviously roxy is the main character but all of the guys get chapters as well and diesel was the one that was the most identifiable whenever his chapter would come up because he obviously is supposed to be the crazy one and his accent was pretty intense i was listening to this on audio and the way that the guy did his voice was just like Oi, little bird. <laughs> he referred to roxy as little bird and every other page was like little bird <laughs> the accents in this audiobook were honestly so horrendous i actually have a couple of clips that i want to show you because they're so bad the female narrator literally does not know how to do a british accent at all it sounds horrendous and then the male narrator is actually british but he chose the worst cockney accent ever he sounds like he just rolled out of the pub and he's drunk and it's giving like peaky blinders extra or oliver twist like can i have some more sir let me just play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like because it's worse than you think like you might hear me telling you it's bad and once you hear it you're gonna be like i didn't know it was that bad her back arch is rubbing her blood and tits across my chest until i can't take it anymore grabbing her hips i line up and slam inside of her making her scream for me again no i do i hate them so much it scares me that's really why i'm walking away this is a really I bad can't accent let fear hold me back not with so much on the line 
Not with full hearts. I genuinely don't think the narrator for Roxy has ever heard a British person because that accent is so bad. Anyways, like I mentioned, Roxy starts out hating the guys, but in about two minutes, she decides that she's okay with staying with them. And that's when the sex scene starts. And when the sex scenes start, they never end. Honestly, the consent in this book was refreshing after the taboo romance books that I read for my last romance video. I'm looking at you, Credence, because that book, sexual assault city. But this one, you know, there were a couple of scenes in the beginning that were dubious consent. And then after that, she was having fun. And we love that for her. I was not having a good time, but I'm very glad that Roxy was having a good time. So the first sex scene occurs with Kenzo while they're playing cards. And this is the one that, that is definitely the consensual non-consent where she's saying no, but saying yes at the same time. So, you know, that whole deal. But if you're into that kind of thing, I definitely think you might like that scene. But anyways, they have sex. And then after that, she gets passed around among the vipers. I'm honestly not gonna walk you through every single sex scene because it gets old really fast. But there are two that I feel like we need to talk about because they are actually insane. So there is a light mafia plot going on where it's the vipers versus the triad because the triad is trying to take over their area. And so they are like fighting and the triad actually hires someone to try to kill them. And Diesel is known as the like torturer guy. Like he's the one that gets information out of people. So Diesel brings Roxy with him when he is interrogating this hitman and he tortures him in front of her but she's kind of into it, honestly. Like he brings her down into the dungeon and at first she's like, he's crazy. And then the more that Diesel tortures the guy, the more that she's like, I'm kind of into it. So after he kills this guy, there's blood all over the floor. He decides that it's time to hook up with Roxy and he takes the knife that he just killed that man with and he shoves it up her ass. I know, I can't believe it either. It was pretty shocking to say the least. As he is doing that to her, she's obviously really enjoying it. He quickly just like snaps a pic with his cell phone and sends it to the boys. It is like, hey, look how sexy our chick Roxy is with this knife sticking out of her ass. Can you imagine hooking up with someone and halfway through they're like, wait, I gotta snap a pic for the boys. Seeing the knife protruding from her behind gets him really turned on. So he decides that it's time to fuck her. And so he maneuvers himself between her legs and starts having sex with her while the knife is sticking out so he is essentially stabbing himself in the abdomen while he's having sex with her this obviously makes zero sense because if this was in real life he would be puncturing one of his organs but this gets explained away by the fact that diesel knows his way around the anatomy because he tortures people but yeah he is just going to pound town and stabbing himself in the abdomen and it's supposed to be this really raunchy cool sex scene i also think that Roxy is like tied up with some chains. There's a lot of things going on in this that I was not on board with. I'm honestly a little concerned by all the TikTok girlies that recommended this book because this book was wildly popular on TikTok for a long time. I need to know if you have spoken to your therapist recently, like what about this book? did you like? As Roxy settles in to her new life of being the love slave of all the vipers, they buy her a bunch of gifts and at first she's really uncomfortable and she's like, don't buy me stuff. I can buy my own stuff. But then they're like, we just want to spoil you because you're our mafia princess. And the clothing that they keep giving her are dresses and things that sound like they came from like Wet Seal or Charlotte Russe. There's a lot of snakes on the dresses and on the rings and the earrings, the different things they give them. And it just sounds like a lot of like cheap costume jewelry. And I really need authors to stop describing clothing in books because it's always so bad and it always shows that the authors do not know how to dress themselves. It's like really bad. Eventually all the vipers decide that they are in love with Roxy and they realize that the only way they can make sure she's really there for them is to set her free and see if she comes back. And the vipers are really mad that she left even though they gave her the opportunity to leave because they thought that that would prove her love. And anyway, she does come back, but they're mad about it. So they punish her with this really terrible orgy scene. The orgy scene is really wild because the acrobatics of what was going on was really unclear to me. She was getting passed around a lot between all of the men. And I feel like the anatomy and the physics of what was going on didn't really make sense. There was just a lot of orifices being used all at once. And what is so wild about this sex scene is that 
two of the guys are actually blood brothers like they all refer to each other as brother but Kenzo and Ryder are actually related by blood and they are participating in this orgy together and as you guys know from my last romance video I do not fuck around with incest credence I'm looking at you again the amount of cum in this book is astronomical especially in this scene because everybody is just blowing a load all over her and there's actually a part where the cum is described as being lubricant for the next guy that's getting in her business and it's between Ryder and Kenzo. I think Kenzo goes first and then Ryder goes next and it's literally described as his cum being a lubricant for his brother to go in more easily. If you can hear those sirens right now, it's because the police are on their way to go arrest Kay and I. Not a single one of the men wear a condom this entire book and I was absolutely shocked that Roxy did not end up pregnant. I definitely thought that that was going to be something that was thrown into the book because typically in a romance book, if the author keeps describing how people are hitting it raw, there's usually a surprise pregnancy that pops up, but this one did not have it. And Roxy never got her period throughout the whole book. So very intriguing indeed. Honestly, the only exciting thing that happens in this book is towards the end, I wanna say the last fourth, Roxy actually gets kidnapped by the triad in retaliation towards the Vipers. It's actually pretty unrealistic when it happens because she ends up killing a bunch when they're trying to grab her and then they get her in a car and she causes a car accident but then they drug her and they take her to this place where she gets tortured and while she's getting tortured she is really like snarky and sassy she's definitely one of those characters that says really cringy things and she keeps laughing at the guy that's torturing her and so it's all very like I don't know, like just kind of cringy and stupid. The Vipers eventually come to save her and they kill like over 100 people in order to do it. And you would think after this, the book would be over, but we still have to endure a couple more sex scenes for about a hundred more pages. The book just truly would not end. And the whole middle part is so boring because it's just monotonous sex scenes over and over and over. The other big thing in the story is that Roxy is there to fix all of these men because each of them have a different problem. Like for example, Ryder is a workaholic because he's the leader of the group and so Roxy helps him connect with his family and let loose and then Diesel is the crazy one and she helps him tame himself a little bit and then Garrett has this history of this ex-girlfriend that like tried to kill him and so because of that he hates women and so all of his scenes with Roxy are pretty violent actually. I know that I said a lot of the scenes were consensual but those are the ones where they are consensual but they're very very violent because Garrett hates women. I don't really remember what Kenzo's problem was because he was probably the most normal of the group. Honestly, these men just needed to go to therapy instead of kidnapping a young girl, or they could have just gone to jail because they did a lot of things that deserved jail time. In that last 100 pages, we also get one more kind of crazy sex scene where Diesel throws her onto a glass table and the table breaks and then all the shards of glass are in her back. And then he like takes a knife and he like cuts up her boobs. I don't know, it's a weird scene. All of the worst sex scenes happen with Diesel and the whole time he's like, let up bud. <laughs> And he always is talking about his cock. He's always like, my cock is straining in my jeans. <laughs> I obviously also don't know how to do a British accent, but pretty realistic in comparison to the book. I fundamentally do not understand why so many people hyped this book up on TikTok. I'm just genuinely concerned for all of you in your reading taste. At this point, I'm pretty sure that even I could quickly write down some Wattpad smut on the back of a CVS receipt and scan it into Kindle Unlimited and all the girlies would eat it up. By the time that we got to the end credits of this audiobook, I was ready to kiss the ground and thank our Lord Jesus that it was over because it was just so bad. It was so bad. And it was so long for what? Over 600 pages? No romance book needs to be that long. And the mafia stuff in this was kind of boring. The whole war with the triad was so random and it didn't even really show up for a lot of the story. Most of the story was sex scenes. So if you're looking for a tome just full of sex, then this is the book for you. But unfortunately, I think that I will be giving this one star. And those are my final thoughts. I really love creepy old guys. We all do. Okay, besties, before we get into talking about Mafia Mistress, we do need to discuss this t-shirt that I got from Nice Shirt Thanks. I put in a prompt where I asked them for a shirt with my dog as arrows to her, and I am so impressed and happy with what they came up with. If you look closely, this looks just like my dog. I don't know where she is right now. I would hold her up if you've never seen her before, but I'll put a picture in so you can see what my dog looks like. But I have a one-eyed dog named Billie Eilis, and they did this. It says Billie's Tour, and it's so cute. They got her little one eye. This book could just be summed up as a a creepy 40 something year old kidnaps a barely legal 18 year old girl and makes her his sex toy. And that would pretty much be this entire book and you wouldn't even have to read it just knowing that one sentence. 
So the basic plot of this book is that we have our main character Francesca or Frankie as her friends call her and she is the daughter of a mafia guy in Toronto and at the start of the book her dad owes this guy from the Italian mafia some money and so he actually sells Frankie to him as a bride for his 18 year old son and so she is whisked away to Italy, kidnapped if you will, and she doesn't really want to be there and she very quickly meets Giulio, the guy that she's supposed to marry and finds out that he's gay. And so they are going to marry each other, but it's just going to be like a friendship marriage. But Fausto is really attracted to Frankie very early on. And so he is feeling a lot of feelings towards her from the moment that he meets her, like when he brings her over on the private plane to Italy. Like he is constantly talking about his dick being hard every time he sees this girl, this 18 year old barely legal girl. And from the moment that Frankie sees Fausto when he's making the deal with her dad, she also thinks that he's sexy. So there's a lot of mutual attraction in the beginning despite their very big age gap. Frankie is set up as being this very independent and fierce young girl who won't listen to anyone. But honestly, she just came across as a very annoying teenager, which makes sense because she was 18, like freshly 18. Like there's multiple parts of the book where she refers to the fact that she was only in high school a couple of months ago. There's just something about a female main character referring to being in class and her high school boyfriend that really doesn't do it for me. I honestly found myself wanting to call CPS many times throughout this book. This obsession that authors have with writing women who are freshly 18 and being taken advantage of by older men is genuinely concerning to me and very unsexy. I need these grown women authors to be studied because what is going on? If the books were written for men, I probably would understand it because obviously men are very attracted to virginal women. But as a woman reading it, I'm like, am I supposed to be into this? Because I am a woman in my early 30s and something about the 18 year old main character is just not doing it for me. Especially because the male love interest is like in his mid to late 40s. I don't really remember how old Fausto is supposed to be, but he's pretty old. Also, he's described as being like really hot and sexy, but I couldn't help but imagine Marlon Brando from The Godfather. So that was very unsexy for me. Like I mentioned, Fausto wants Frankie from the first moment that he sees her. He keeps talking about how nice and bouncy her tits are and how hard his cock is. Like he really wants this underage girl. Well, she's not underage, she's 18, but you know what I mean, like almost underage girl. And he cannot stop thinking about how much he wants his son's fiance. And so there's a scene where they go on a yacht and she's wearing a bikini and he is driven so wild with lust that he actually tells Julio that the engagement is canceled. So that way he can have sex with her. He corners her on the boat and tells her that they are going to be lovers and she doesn't have a say about it. And Frankie tries to say no, but all Fausto has to do is literally think about her pussy lips and she folds. And so there is an intimate scene where he goes down on her on the boat and she is basically putty in his hands from that very first moment, even though she keeps saying, I don't belong to you and I will not have sex with you. But obviously she does. I found it pretty annoying how little backbone Frankie actually had and it felt often that she was cosplaying as a strong woman but then even after I would think that I would feel guilty because she is an 18 year old being groomed by this 40 nasty man. It would be one thing if as they started having sex Fausto was really sweet to her and really caring but as we go on in the book he's just really mean and all he ever thinks about is how much he likes her body. Like this man literally just wanted to fuck like he did not care about her as a person Person, and he constantly made her say that she belonged to him like whenever they would do sexual things he would not proceed with getting her off until she would say that she was his property he would be like who does your pussy belong to and she would be like yours Fausto and it got old really fast the only sweet moment I can think of in this book is when he gives her his credit card and lets her go to Rome to buy whatever she wants but even that wasn't that sweet because he's doing that as an apology for something really dickish that he did there is a pretty strong misogynistic thread all throughout this book. Fausto is very traditional in his views and so he's constantly being very possessive of Frankie and you know reinforcing his ownership and every step of the way Frankie says no to whatever he wants to do but he coerces her every time. Like there's this one scene where they have anal sex and she says no at first but he's like I'm gonna do it to you and you're gonna like it and so she eventually says yes and so a lot of the sex scenes are like that where she's saying no but then he seduces her, coerces her and she goes along with it. Fausto is really upset that before they got together 
together frankie had sex with another guy he i think says something along the lines of you were fucking everyone in toronto and she's like no i only had sex with one guy because she had one high school boyfriend and then fausto is like really pleased that it was only one other guy before him which is really kind of fucked up obviously because he's had sex with like probably hundreds of women frankie keeps thinking to herself that she's such a bad girl that deserves to be punished by fausto because when she was a teenager she used to sneak out of the house and have sex but she genuinely was just doing what teenagers do and so i don't really understand what point of view the author was trying to put forth with this but it obviously made me pretty uncomfortable fausto is also very fixated on how women should act and dress he's constantly critiquing frankie and telling her what she can and can't wear he has the attitude that she's like a wild horse that he needs to break in and he always is thinking to himself about how he can't wait to make her submit to him i think what disturbs me about this aspect of the book and books like this where the guy is just so controlling and wants to you know take control of the girl is that it's not not that these men want a submissive woman because if they wanted that they could just go out and find it because they're supposed to be like hot and sexy and all the women want to sleep with them anyway it's that they want a strong woman that they can break down and force to submit to them and that is their fantasy that kind of grosses me out and i feel like fausto perfectly fit this idea of just a man who's like i'm gonna take this strong woman and she's going to submit to me and she's gonna like it every time that frankie does something that fausto doesn't like he punishes her there's a part of the book where she wears a bikini on the boat when he tells her not to and one of his colleagues actually calls her a slut and he doesn't defend her and instead afterwards he gets irrationally mad at her and tells her that she has to stay on the boat overnight and the only other people on the boat are people who don't speak english and then there ends up being a really crazy storm and she gets really scared and she thinks she's gonna die and fausto doesn't show up to the next day and eventually she's the one that ends up apologizing to him this is the part where he gives her his credit credit card so she can spend it in Rome. So obviously the whole credit card thing was not very sweet because it was based on the fact that he had literally left her scared on a boat overnight with people that she didn't know. There were just a lot of mental games like that with Fausto that really grossed me out. Also the sex scenes in this book weren't particularly good. They were kind of boring and like I mentioned it was a lot of coercion and things that I just personally don't find very sexy. Also I'd have to say the worst thing about this book is not the grooming or the coercion or the mental abuse. It's actually the fact that Frankie starts calling Fausto paparino in the bedroom. She googles it and finds out that this means sugar daddy. And so she just keeps calling him Paparino and I did not find that sexy at all. It made me think of like Paw Patrol or something like Paparino or like Mario being like, it's a me Paparino. Like it just was like really bad. It kind of sounds like a pizza chain or something. And it really took me out of it. I did not like that nickname at all. At the end of the book, Frankie gets pregnant because of course they've been having sex without a condom. And you would think that this would make Fausto be a little bit nicer to her, but he actually is meaner than ever. He treats her like a glorified incubator and it's all about her baby and not really her. I think there's a part where she wants to get rid of the baby and he's like, no, you're not allowed to. And shortly after he finds out that she's pregnant, he discovers that Giulio is gay. And in the mafia, especially in Italy, it is very taboo to be gay. And so he's very worried for his son. I will give Fausto the fact that he is not homophobic. He just doesn't know what to do because a lot of men are killed for being gay in the mafia. And so he's very upset and irritable about the situation that no one told him. And then he asks Frankie if she had known all along that Julio was gay and she of course says yes and he blows a gasket he is so mad and he calls her a lying whore and he disowns her and tells her that she can have his baby but he never wants to see her again so he sends her away to go live at a beach house and she ends up crying every single day because at this point in the book she has decided that she is in love with Fausto even though all they've done is have sex after she finds out his true colors even though he's literally been saying all this up front the entire time she is very much pikachu face like i can't believe that the misogynistic man who slut shamed me for having sex with one guy actually believes all the misogynistic things that he says this book actually ends on a cliffhanger because it is a two book series the next book actually continues the story but i'm gonna let you know right now before i even tell you what happened i do not care i will not be reading the next book but basically she gets kidnapped by a rival mafia guy and that is pretty much the last page like she gets taken away and put in a car and we don't know what's gonna happen next but i'm gonna be up front with you i don't care what happens next like i really really do not i think if i were to read more age gap i definitely would like to find books where the girl is at least in her mid-20s because then i can be like okay her frontal lobe is 
fully developed and she can date a 40, 50, 60, 70 year old, whatever she wants to date, she can do it because she's 25. But yeah, I don't know. I would even accept like early 20s, like 22, 23, but something about 18 is just not hitting right for me. And the fact that Fausto was like in his mid 40s, it was just very icky to me. I was not having a good time. And so of course I will be giving this book one star. But that brings us to the end of this Mafia Romance reading vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. Also, before you go, if you're interested, I actually read a fourth book for this video and I posted it as an exclusive video on my Patreon. She's not traumatized, she's dickmatized. Deliberately swallowing down her period. You how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't. I need a moment to pray, honestly, like. Lord Jesus, please. If you're interested in the vlog you just got a taste of, then head on over to my Patreon where you can subscribe to the Besties tier and get all of my exclusive content. Or if you're not interested in doing that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've made it to the end of this video and you had a good time, feel free to use the old man emoji in your comment in honor of Fausto from Mafia Mistress. I thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day. <laughs>